All South Africans are invited to attend the general elections which will take place next month. We're talking about May 29. It cannot be that 30 years into our democracy or nearly 30 years into our democracy, some citizens have access to flush toilets, others still have to rely on baguette toilets and pit toilets. Now you have established Minister of Electricity. We hope to see Minister of Trains. We hope to see Minister of Flights. We hope to see Minister of Dinan. We hope to see Minister of Potholes. We hope to see Minister of GBV. Because the reality is that, Mr. President, nothing is working under you. You are a man on top and doing nothing. Where do you think the ANC is going to land up if you were to take a range? Right, of where you think they're going to fall percentage-wise. What do you think? How do we move from 3% into 51% and take over without having to kiss, to kiss frogs? The greater tragedy is the fact that for many of our young people are ending up in the streets where too many of them are, un are not only unemployed, but they are unemployable. You can see that all these electoral laws, all these initiatives is to stop the EFF. Why are they stopping the EFF? A white lady answered in one of the interviews, the EFF is the only party which will do what it says it will do, and which is the expropriation of land without compensation. We have judged the election through a scenario lens, so we ascribe a 65% probability that the ANC will garner between 45% and 50%. It's a party that has gained enormous experience in governance and development. I, I suppose the ANC is not necessarily being secretive. They are just struggling to finalize uh, they are least uh, ahead of uh, the deadline, which is at 5 p.m. Uh, look, it's true. The ANC knows how to throw a good party, and we love partying in South Africa, isn't it? Fortunately, it's top on our manifesto. Uh, you know, the first thing when you open your, our manifesto, you read is that let's implement our jobs plan. The unknown is who's going to be sitting on the other side of the table when you say we'll talk with the ANC. Uh, does Sul Ramaphosa survive being the first ANC president to lose their majority? They adopt the Road to Victory Manual, which is our election strategy for 2024. The ANC's time is finally up, and a new vision is needed to chart a course towards prosperity. The answer, simple answer, is that the current arrangement that we have in coalition is not working. That's it. Because we go around kissing frogs, eh? coalition, coalition, eh? ha, ha. we can't allow that. To be kissing ugly people of the ANC. Ha, ha. And worse, kissing DA, white racist, with very thin lips. President Ramaphosa must always uh, engage with the population in all our major cities and towns in the country. The survival of the ANC depends on the Eastern Cape. Everywhere else, the ANC is failing dismally, except in the Eastern Cape. We will not go to war having accepted defeat. We've never done it. We won't do it. Um, we're going to war to win. The economy of South Africa has been stagnant. And my suspicion is that we are growing negatively. And they don't announce it to protect him. Because once you announce the negative, it means economic recession. And they don't want South Africa to be declared that it is under economic recession because it's under Ramaphosa. But once Ramaphosa gets out, they, you are going to be confronted with the reality that our economy is negative growth. Of course, in these general elections, there will be a lot of candidates this time, more than even the previous elections that they had before. And we will be having a lot of political parties, which will be wanting also to take over 
the ruling party because there is a couple of new political parties which have been created and all of them they are running for these general elections but we all have one question in mind which brought us here in this video because we want to discuss with you about different candidates who will be participating to this uh, South African general elections that will be taking place next month. And the question we had prepared for you in this video is to know, is Julius Malema the right person to lead South Africa? That will be the question that we need to sit down and have a conversation because, of course, South Africans, since they are called, they are being called to go and fill their assignment or to play their duty as citizens of South Africa, they need also to know who are these leaders who are wanting, who are wanting to uh, come and lead them. So, therefore, since we'll be discussing about all the candidates who will be taking place in these general elections, of course, this time we want to talk about Julius Malema. Why do, uh, do Julius Malema believe that he can be the right person for South Africa uh, president and why should South Africans have to vote him? Of course, we have submitted uh, our invitation to the president of EFF, Julius Malema, so that we can get an opportunity to ask him again these questions once we are being given that chance to sit in front of him. But in meantime, we just want to discuss about among ourselves as Pan-Africans because we all know the kind of role that Julius Malema does play in Africa continent and in diaspora. Therefore, uh, we believe that we can sit down and try to uh, analyze together and have these conversations and try to understand if Julius Malema is indeed a right person to, to be the president of South Africa. Comrades, the country has collapsed. We are on an autopilot. We don't know where the pilot is. Those who have the rumor say the pilot is at Palapala sailing buffaloes and uh, ankol. That's why the plane does not have a pilot. When you are a president of South Africa, by law, you are not allowed to do any other business except to be a president of South Africa. Why? Because you are a pilot. You can't be a pilot at the same time in the same plane, be a air hostess and sell Zimbas in the plane and leave the plane leaderless because you are busy selling Zimbas. Your president told you that he sometimes leaves the seat of a pilot and goes and become an air hostess and sell Zimbas. So we are looking for a pilot because our pilot is no more. How can a president admit to have put dollars and dollars of rents under the mattress and that person still spend 24 hours in the office after admitting to have had dollars under the mattress? Such thuggerism. We are checking each other every afternoon. He checks the money and put under the mattress. And when they steal the money from him, he doesn't go to police station. He goes and calls other taxi drivers to go and look for the other one who stole from him. What type of a president do we have in South Africa who leaves the office to go and sell uncle? Let's say the money is not stolen. That's fine. It's his money. He says he made money during the sales of Ankol and Buffalo. When he was selling Ankol and Buffalo, who was the president of the South Africa during that time? You have a president who tells you that I sometimes leave this seat to do other things. And you don't release him or no. 
go and do those things freely. We want a full-time president. We don't want a part-time president. In the squatter camps, ambulance can't go in. In Kaili in the squatter camps, ambulance can't go in. That mother must be wheelbarrowed to the ambulance. Go and call my neighbor. She's ashamed to be held by a boy. Go, go, go. Run, run. Go and call my neighbor. When the boy is about to leave. No, 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 no. Come back, come back. Just hold here. Hold here. When these kids grow up and have no respect for life and they kill with anger, we all ask ourselves, where does this anger come from? We don't have that detail that they got exposed to things that they were not supposed to be exposed to at an early age. When you destroy the EFF, that mother who's going through that and that boy who's going through that, they imagine that one day there's going to be a tar road here that will no longer give birth in a wheelbarrow, will no longer give birth in our shacks. The EFF one day will come and govern this municipality. The EFF one day will build the clinic that is going to run for 24 hours. You come and shatter that dream. They are crying tears. They are waiting for someone to come and wipe their tears. When they look at the red beret, they see someone who is going to wipe their tears. Look at them when you visit their homes in the EFF regalia. Their faces just brighten up because they know the hope has arrived in our village. We found Transnet working, transporting tons and tons of minerals. We have collapsed Transnet. As a result, there are too many trucks on the road. Oh. And too many trucks on the road means death. Because many of them are not in good condition. Many of them just turn the way they like because mm. they know they are not at risk. Mm. Let's go and fix Transnet. That's why today is a Bali fila eskipa sa Mandela ka 1994 mu tololo RDP nothing au sebetsi au nanto skipa us toads ba fa skipa sa mbeki ba so fe mu sebetsi ba so fe ntlu ba fa skipa sa wa tlhoka ri ke patanat till today awa tola mu sebetsi o thotsi skipa today before they will never go to school kamara skipa future let us be obsessed with the future of the children of south africa not the love for the t-shirt dikipa batolefa bale fele di food parcel because ba 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 konkludi leuri Le rata din tota no. You have nothing to do with the future. I don't live for now. I live for the future. Eba tako wena as a young person oba buchori. I don't see this T-shirt. I see the future because I've got a giraffe view. I can see that if I take this T-shirt now, I will be destroying the future of the unborn children. Of South Africa today. Hamewa Kali Mewa Hau. Hanke Baska accept us keep back 1994. Me and you will not be suffering. Future, eh? They were supposed to have shaped it 
in 1994. But Swadi Baka, it's not too late. Tell them you voted for them, you gave them chance, enough is enough. Now you need a chance for your children. Well guys, we all know that in South Africa, after the apartheid regime, we've been having the ANC in power for all these years. We're talking about more than 30 years now. Uh, the ANC, they've been in power, starting with a uh, former president and later that uh, uh, Mandela, Nelson Mandela, of course, uh, who lead during his time. He did what he could have done. After him, we saw President Tabombeki, who came also in power and he did also what he could have done. And after him, we see an intimate uh, presidency of uh, uh, Kalama Mutantle, who came also in and did what he could have done. After him, we saw the elected uh, president, former president Jacob Zuma, who came also in and he did what he could have done until he, when he was kicked out from the office because of the uh, uh, corruption allegations which he was accused of. Then after then we saw how president, the current president of uh, South Africa, President Cyril Ratamela Ramaphosa, who came also in power and of course he did also what he could have also done. So in within this all 30 years that uh, the ANC they've been in power, of course everyone they have what they have seen with their own two eyes or what they have heard. Um, that the ANC they have done as good or bad. So, and that we leaving it to each and every person as in individuals to uh, judge for themselves. But we are not here to talk today about what the ANC have done good for people of South Africa or bad for people of South Africa. But we are, we are here just to discuss about the candidates of uh, the uh, president of EFF, Julius Malema, because the man is so desperate to become the president of South Africa. If you listen to his fighters or his followers, they like to introduce him as the incoming president of South Africa. Of course, it is normal for them to introduce him in that way or to call him in that way because they are opposition political party and we are talking about the third biggest political party in South Africa, so which is normal. We all know that when a political party, they are in being in the opposition party, their mission is not for them to remain there forever. No. Their mission is for them to come and take over the country and rule as well. That is the, the reason why people does politics. People does politics so that they can be in power because there is a lot of benefits that people do get, especially as a political party. They usually get when they're in power than when they're in the opposition political parties. There are more challenges that you can face as a, an opposition leader than you can't face when you are in being in the ruling party. Some other things even at the court or problems that we might be facing. If you are facing all these problems as a, an opposition, it's going to be more harder for you to survive it or to walk free than if you are being in power. Because if you are being in power as a ruling party, there's a couple of privilege. Even if you are being in front of a judge, before they condemn you, they'll think twice. You know what I mean? I mean, this is what we see all over Africa. Proof to that, since we are talking about Julius Malema, because I don't want to give you guys the other examples of someone else that we are not talking about. Since we are discussing about Julius Malema, see the man knowing that he's a, a opposition leader. How many cases does he have inside the court? Mm -hmm. How many cases does Julius Malema have inside the court that he usually go and have to answer each and every time? And how many years have passed by? Yet, they have not uh, uh, finished up this case to say whether they have found him guilty or not. Instead, they keep on making him going to the uh, court each and every time. They make him go to the court and going to the court each and every time is spending off a lot of money because people in the level such as the, the one of Julius Malema, um, their lawyers, they usually charge a lot. You might find out maybe those lawyers they are charging fifteen to twenty five thousand per hour or per day. You never gonna have an idea because it's a man who who's, who have a very high profile and obviously 
everything that he touch or everything that he does, it will cost him. So going in court each and every time, whereby you find the case like the one of his bodyguard who had shot in the hair during the anniversary of the EFF, that case until today is still trending, is still inside the court, and the judge she does as she pleases. Julius Malema once even complain about it because since he's a man who does not put his language in the pocket, he had the courage to speak inside the court. No one must disrespect us like that. No one. No magistrate, no prosecutor must disrespect us like that and then we keep quiet. She has never been early to any court. She says, come and turf, we come and turf, she's never here. She's never here. We must not talk because we are scared to go to jail or be disrespected. It can't be. We have rights. And our rights must be respected. It's a load shading. We're starting at 11. It doesn't matter what time you start. You start at 1, you start at 2. She's going to be late. And even though the judge was not there, but I believe she saw the videos which was being taken inside the court where Julius Malema was shouting at her and trying to put her on a place. And later on, we saw that white judge, she came and apologized to the president of EFF and uh, giving her own reasons of whatsoever was making her delay. The trial was expected to start at 11 o'clock on Wednesday morning. The late start was due to load shedding. The magistrate says the delay on her side was not done intentionally. I ended an invitation for the discussion in chambers from the state and the defense. I waited in vain and I was told 10 minutes ago that such request was declined by the defense. That is why I'm only entering now. Hopefully, one of these days, that case will be over. Besides that, there's still another case of what happened at the funeral of uh, Mama Winnie uh, Mandela at Soka City in Soweto. We all know what happened that day. But that case is still also inside. Actually, it, 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 I think they, they have finished it, if I'm not mistaken. You might correct me through the comments. So, there were a couple of cases that Julius Malema have to face inside the court. And it is more obvious because he's an opposition leader. If he was in the power, if he was uh, maybe a president or maybe uh, someone who's uh, in the ruling party, I believe there were gonna be there's supposed to be some um, should I say um, privilege that's supposed to accompany him as well. But unfortunately, that was not the case. So the point I'm trying to make here is that being in opposition political party and being in a ruling party it always come with a different privilege even when they want to share the money or they want to share the post in the government you will find out that the ruling party they always have one step ahead of everyone yes remember there's a, this moment whereby Julius Malim was asked a question to know how who's founding the EFF because they could see how the EFF, they spend millions of money to organize their 10th anniversary uh, in FNB Stadium in Soweto. And uh, people they were like questioning, especially people who are fighting the organizations of EFF, who don't want to see the EFF going far, who want to destroy the EFF. They have to come and write articles, use their own journalists to say bad things about who's funding EFF and everything. So Julius Malema had to come and clarify all these things by telling them that no, actually you are asking a question which you already have the answer. Not long ago, the ICC, which is the independence, what, 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 the one that is organizing the South African elections, they had given them something like a 35 to 38 million rands. And this money is a lot of money. So Julius Malema, after give all these explanations, he had to tell the media that if a political party, the one with about 44 or 47 councillors or members in the parliament, they can be able to have almost 40 million of friends. What about the political party such as the DA 
or much more what about the ANC which have the majority already in the parliament so when Julius Malema was saying this it was another way of just telling you guys that being in a political uh, as a opposition leader or opposition political party you're not gonna always have the same benefit as the one of the ruling party and those are the kind of the challenge that most of oppositions they usually go through therefore they are trying everything by all means to make sure that they come and take over the power beside them fulfilling whatsoever could be their promises that they will have make against their people saying that no once i'm in power i'll do this for you i'll do that i'll do that which by the way most of these politicians they don't even fulfill but the main reasons that usually motivate a lot of politicians to move from opposition to uh, being a ruling party well we're talking about mula we're talking about money money is something that usually motivate a lot of people to do politics because they know there is an easy cash there there is an easy way to walk away with corruptions now this bring us to the questions which we asked earlier on is this the same reasons why Julius Malema want to be the president of South Africa? Is this the same reasons that is motivating people for the AEFF to be as a ruling party in South Africa? Well, guys, in order for us to ask that question very well, let us take a look on how the EFF is being organized. Through their leadership, we can be able to tell whether Julius Malema can make a good present for South Africans or not. Because me, I always say, in order for you to see a person that this person that will organize, you just have to see on how they run their things around. The way you, if you visit them by their place, their house, how they are well organized, their office, you know. If you still maybe entering the house, you see the shoes there, the socks there. On the other side, maybe the underwear somewhere there or something there. The, the dirty dishes all over. Obviously, you will tell already that this person, they can't run an organization. And if you see a person who is well organized by the place, you can tell already that this person that is that clean. So when it comes to cleanliness, you can give them your vote because you believe that they are clean so that is one of the things that i want us to focus more a little bit the eff was created about 10 years ago and me i don't want to talk as a person who uh who's being part of uh, any kind of uh, political party or something like that but i want to talk as a a political a political analysis and who's doing is and I'm just giving my point of view on looking on how things are going like things how things have happened so far so I was saying that the political part came it was it started existing about 10 years ago this 10 years ago as Pan-Africans I can tell you that I know a couple of political party in Africa who lasted in opposition political party for more than 40 years mm -hmm. i know about seven of them in different uh, countries in africa whereby they do everything they could do but yet they were not getting power or they were not becoming president some of them they were not even having a ease access to be to have members in the parliament if it is not their wife their children, their uncles and family members who have to vote for them in order for them to in order to keep them inside the, the parliament or, or any uh, positions that they could have been in being interested in. So EFF they came in in the first elections that they participate, they were already having about 15 uh, members in the parliament that it was a very strong message which they had sent to the ruling party and to the main opposition 
of course I'm referring to the ANC and DA because that was actually something that they had to remind them that from now on this parliament won't belong to you alone this parliament will be having new faces this parliament will be having new political party this parliament will be having a new colors and they succeed to do that in their second elections which they participate they end up even increasing members in the parliament almost 50 members in the parliament that is not a joke so looking at the experience which i know or some of the testimonies which i know about some of the uh, opposition political party in africa continent how they can get to start to have even three members in the parliament when i see how the EFF with their leadership, Julius Malema, managed to do it all this in 10 years. That, I'll tell you, that's not something that we can neglect. It's not something that we can take it easy or ignore. Because the more you try to ignore this kind of people, the danger will become for you. Especially if you are a ruling party. Because besides them having members in the parliament, they are all over the country. We are talking about... 1,000 and something councillors all over the country. They are now even ruling some of the municipality. That is a strong message that any of a politician should consider. And when you see how EFF manage to recruit their members, you will tell already that they have a very strong leadership because they manage to recruit about 1 million members, which is not a joke. In one of the videos, uh, when I was talking about this before, I did a, for you a very simple calculation telling you on how this 1 million members can turn into 10 million members. Because having at least 1 million members, that's quite a lot. A political party needs to have members who are loyal and faithful to their organizations. And Julius Malema, as clever as he was, he thought that it would be much more better for him to grow up members, loyal members, who have the identity in the system of their, that political party, who have the cards that confirm that they are the members of the EFF. These loyal members... There are people who will vote for EFF. So right now, looking at things, how they are standing right now, whether we like it or not, EFF in these elections, they want to have votes less than 1 million. That is excluding simple individuals like me and you if we decide to vote for them or not. But one thing for sure, EFF will be having about 1 million for sure which will vote for their leadership or maybe other councillors. And if it happened that the participants to the elections, they can be maybe 3 million. And out of that 3 million, if EFF can manage to have only 1 million members who can vote for them, the 2 million, we know what will happen. Because in the beginning of this video, I told you on how political party have been increased in South Africa as a mushroom. Mm -hmm. more than 100 political parties that's a lot already and all of them they want to become presidents all of them they want to be in the municipalities all of them they want to lead they want to be mayors so if EFF managed to take 1 million out of 3 million of voters the 2 millions obviously it will be shared among these other political parties we're talking about DA ANC, Rise Mzanzi, which is also a new political party that seemed to be having, becoming also even more powerful because they were just pronounced last year and already they, they already have members almost everywhere in the in the country. So obviously the vote will be shay. And if the vote has to be shay, the one who already have one million members it will be more secure and will be having more chances to take over. Because within that two, and, I mean, two millions, they might still have even more uh, 
people will vote for them as individuals who are not members of the EFF. So, Julius Malemba, with his members, they came with that idea to recruit at least one million members. I said if they recruit one million, or I mean one member of the ANC, I mean uh, EFF of course, and then it happened that this one member went and he recruits his wife, his children, his mother, his uncles, his grandmother, uh, father, his colleague from work, his member from church. Already you can tell one member of the EFF, they are able to bring about 10 members or 10 voters who are not members of the EFF. You see the strategy why EFF they came with this idea of recruiting members. We shall see and see. We shall wait and see on how this will react in the ballot, by the way. But another point, we look at the way this organization is being run. Myself, I've got a couple of chance to sit in front of Julius Malema uh, through their march, through their meetings, through their press conference. Guys, <laughs> uh, okay, I, I prefer maybe you should see it for yourself. But so far, of course, we participate with ANC, not much with DA, I can't say much about them, but let's say ANC and the EFF, the kind of organizations that I have seen in EFF, I doubt anyone or any political party have it in South Africa. That's my point of view. Because the hospitality, the discipline, the respect of mutual respect like colleagues or uh, how do they call each other? Comrades. Yes. Respect as comrades. Respect of their guests. That's something else. They are so well organized to the point that even when they are doing the march, you will see their leadership is right in front and everyone that at the back. If Malema stand and say that Guys, don't do this. You'll see people obeying immediately. Which is different with other political parties. Whereby they will challenge you right there. In front of cameras. But when it comes to EFF, that's something else. The same EFF we're talking about here. They have also these things of uh, um, trying to save money among themselves. I'll give a short example. So... Every uh, activities of EFF I had attended before, I noticed they have these things of uh, cooking for everyone who will be there, whether it is the musicians, whether it is the media, whether it is their guests, whoever. They cook, they slot cows, they do everything. So I was even asking myself a question at a certain point. I was like, how much are these people spending, by the way? Because hiring a catering company it's very expensive they will charge you per plate and per person but these people they are making thousands of people eat in a day but just to find later on that actually they don't even hire the these caterings or the or whatever whatever it is they don't hire anything instead what they do they have their own chef they have their own materials, caterings, they have their own everything, guys. EFF, they have their own studio, which they produce even some of uh, these musicians. You guys heard even Julius Malema talking about it, that most of these summer pianos, you are busy dancing in your nightclubs. You don't know that the owners, they produce it for free in the EFF, for free. So they are having a studio. And that's not something easy. They are having their own media. In other words, like a TV channel. They are having it. That's a lot of money, but they already have it. They are having their own um, stage. You know, guys, how much is it to hire a stage? Like when you sing, someone's talking, standing on the stage. You know how much it is? Because that thing can even cost you a million just to hire it. For it to, to, I mean, for you to hire it, and that company will come and install and everything. But they're having their own. They're having their own uh, sound system. They're having, 
you know they're having a lot of things and when you look all these things you'll see already this is how you get to see a person who's well organized and they are running all these things in discipline and the respect of one another mm -hmm. these are the things no one told me about it these are the things which i saw with my own two eyes and we have to speak the truth because that's the that's actually the reason why we we usually sit in front of the camera in your screen so that we can talk speak the truth so when you look all this it shows on how uh, Malem with his people that are well organized and through these organizations if they have to go through this until the end I believe they'll go far and if it happened by any chance that Malema can become a president if they apply this strategy I believe a lot of nonsense that we are seeing in South Africa won't happen but guys beside the organizations or having a proper organizations what else can make Julius Malema become a great leader not only of South Africa but of Africa continent of course there are a couple of things most of them you guys you know it but for me I think the fact that Julius Malema stand for Africa that is something that me personally I'll support why? Because I have an African blood running in my vein. I'm a Pan-African. And anyone who comes to join the battle that Pan-Africans were doing all, all over around the world in order for us to liberate Africa, that person, they'll have my support, I'll have their bag. Why? Because Julius Malema is one of African leaders who have that courage of course there were some many of them before him we used to have people such as uh, uh, Patrice Mary Lumumba from Congo we have Thomas Sankara we have Mohamed Gaddafi Robert Mugabe we have Mohamed Guruma we have so many leaders who were there before him and a lot of them they have died already some they were assassinated some they were poisoned some they were eliminated secretly but in our day as a young child have to come with that kind of courage to first the former colonial or the west and look in, uh, look them into their eyes and tell them the truth on how things should be done in africa that it is something that not all south africa need a leader like that but africa continent need a leader like that because that's what we need right now julius malema one of his speech that uh, really used to uh, touch me a lot it is when the queen of england queen elizabeth died we all saw how Africans leaders they fly in their suit going to salute the women who had colonized and killed people in Africa continent all of them they obey to that command which was given by the King Charles saying that they should come here to bow before the Queen we saw them going you guys still remember some of them they were even packed in the same bus while in Africa you find one African head of the state African leader you'll be seeing them walking with maybe thousands cars all just because they want you to know that they are passing by with a median light whoa, 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 whoa. but when they arrive in the United Kingdom they were treated as a school kid school children they were all packed in one bus for them to go and bow before the coffin of the Queen Elizabeth and after then they had to go and congratulate the so-called new King of England forgetting that these are the people who have committed serious crime in Africa continent forgetting that 
These are people who have done crazy things to Africans. Our forefathers, some of them, their hands were cut off just because maybe you are lazy to not work in the way, they, in the way that they're expecting you to work. They make sure that they cut your hands off. Some of them, they were thrown in the acid. Hmm? And yet, we were still having these African leaders who have to go and bow to the body, to a dead body of a such kind of a person. Now, you believe me when I always tell you that we are being leaded by puppet presidents in Africa because they are so hypocrites. They will say one thing today and tomorrow they will do the other thing. But it was only Julius Malema, I mean, expect Julius Malema, who had that courage to speak it loud and say that we are not mourning the Queen. It will be wrong of me to leave this mic without saying to Britain and everybody else who care, we do not mourn the death of a colonizer and a murderer who came and killed our people and she's wearing proudly a stolen coat on her head. We have nothing to do with the Queen. Renaka Spedi, but Bao Kwarubuli, Slaga Rema, Marawa Nao, Kele Kodu Kodu, Lele Volai Lemba Tubare Na, Bao Uchadu Minerali Tene Afrika. Today, people treat a woman, a woman the Queen. But when Helen Zile treated and said that not everything is bad about colonialism, you all said Helen Zile is a racist. How can she praise colonialism? By mourning and praising the queen, you are celebrating colonialism. You are not different from Helen Zile. We were not colonized by the land called Britain. We were colonized by the leadership of Britain that killed our people. So we must not be asked to do wrong things here. We are very clear. The Queen does not represent anything good. Britain has got a lot of gold, yet they don't have a single mine of gold. Those are stolen goods. We must talk about reparation. We must talk about the return of the gold. We must talk about the return of the stolen diamond. And not these other state issues which are not important to us. How can you be oppressed for so many years? After liberation, you've got nothing to show that you have been liberated. You have no land. You have got no bank. You have got no mind. The only thing you have is a hatred of other Africans. It was this queen who gave us surnames, by the way. This Britain, we did not have surnames. We're not going to cry for her. She means nothing to us. Instead, she still owe us. She still owe us a big apology. She still owe us our minerals that she steal from Africa continent. Those golden cars that we see over there, because England they don't have uh, gold uh, mining, so where do they get all those gold? Are you going to tell me that they bought it? If they bought it, where is the license which proved that they had bought it? And we should know also at what price did they bought it? <laughs> of course, it was all things that they, they have to come and impose and take it by force like they used to do. So Julius Malema had that courage at least to stand and tell the world that a true Pan-Africans should never cry for such kind of a person. Instead, Julius Malema even went far, threatening the new king, saying that he should come and do what his mother could not be able to do by start apologizing. That kind of courage it's something that will show a true leader. A true leader is a, a person who has the courage to speak the truth even when it hurts. Okay? The courage is something that will make you sacrifice your life to protect your people. 
that kind of courage is what we saw in Julius Malema. Do you guys also still remember when the BBC journalist had to ask Julius Malema about uh, Julius Malema wanting to support Vladimir Putin, saying that it's going to harm him, it's going to give him the, the guns if he become a president, those kind of things. And this journalist was like, how can you do something like that, knowing very well that Vladimir Putin is under sanctions, knowing very well that Vladimir Putin, he does this and that. Do you think aligning yourself with Vladimir Putin is going to be good for South Africa? But that's what it is now. South Africa is in alliance with Russia, with India, uh, with Brazil, with China. So why are you asking me as if it's a, some policy that is going to be implemented South Africa right after now. I took over? South Africa is in alliance with Russia now. Don't create an impression that it is Malema who is going to come and create an alliance with Russia. But there are some very specific Actually, if, I will if, go, if I may I will say go so. beyond that. I will go beyond the, the friendship with Russia and in the war I will align with Russia and I will even supply the weapons to Russia. Because Russia is in a war with an, with imperialism and any agenda that seeks to push back uh, imperialist agendas it's well within the policies of the EFF. Well, Julius Malemo could have taken that opportunity and zip his mouth. Maybe by being like, yeah, no, I did not say like that. You see the problem here is that uh, what I mean to say, it was not like that. I wanted to say it in this context. He did not beat around the bush. He went straight to the point and he told them the truth. He said, yes, I will arm Vladimir Putin if I become a president. You say... Quite clearly, I would arm Vladimir yes. Putin. Yes. You know that the International Criminal Court wants Vladimir Putin to face war crimes charges. Hmm. It must start with Tony Blair. It must start with George Bush. It must go to Barack Obama. Then it can go to uh, Putin. So, so let's get this so straight. Let's You're be, saying to me and, that and your, a, your a, policy, a, if you were in power in South Africa, is quite simple that your enemy's enemy, and it seems you regard the US and its allies as the enemy, yes. your enemy's enemy yes. is your friend. Never mind if he's a suspected war criminal, never mind if the UN and the ICC say they have compelling evidence of Russian war crimes. You don't care. As far as you're concerned, my enemy's enemy no, is you, my friend. You, you're exaggerating, but, but another point which you don't want me to go there is that um, Tony Blair accepted that they were wrong about Saddam Hussein, uh, to an extent that he did a, an apology of a thug, right? You, you have never called for his arrest. A man admitting that I, as I was wrong. Uh, uh, to How many people died there, uh, uh, killed by those people? So all I'm saying is we are with President Putin because uh, it's not any of my enemy. It is an anti-imperialist agenda that says the American dominance and its allies should be undermined at all costs. And he gave a reason. The reason was that anyone, any oppressor or former colonials who's against want our visions, that kind of a person, we can't associate with them. So all this kind of speech that Julius Malema had said before, it had sent a very strong message to the Western countries. They know already that this guy, if he become a president of South Africa, we want not only have a place in South Africa, but especially in Africa, because you will revolt a lot of young generation. Because already his message out there, it has already started having a big impact among African youth. Yes, trust me. When we talk about Julius Malema or maybe uh, having an interview with him or maybe have a, um, a, I call a press conference with him, we read comments. And this comment, all of them, they don't come from South Africa. We have comments which are coming all over around the world. And you could see that our fellow brothers, African brothers and sisters, they are all together with someone like Julius Malema. All because of his courage. And he's doing all this without the help of anyone.
We are talking about a man who had that courage to say that no one should never, should never come and lie to you and say that, no, I'm the one who usually sponsor EFF or I'm the one who usually do this and that. Because the EFF is funding its, its, its own. They don't want to take the money from uh, Robert or Oppenheimer or anyone or the Western countries. They don't want to take any money. Comrades, we will never get a chase country if we still have parties that are in power and they are controlled by the Oppenheimer family. Today, when Masoti gives the EFF 200,000 to register as a political party, they flag him as a politically exposed person. They close his accounts because he gave the EFF 200,000. But the Oppenheimer family gives the DA 15 million, gives Action SA 10 million. They are not flagged as politically exposed person because they gave DA, ANC, Action SA money. But once you give EFF money, which is a constitutional political party, third largest in South Africa. They treat you the same way they treat terrorists. You know why? Because as clever again as he is, Julius Malema I'm referring to, he already understood that if he have to accept the offer, the mind from these people, tomorrow they'll hold him on his balls and he won't be able to move anymore. That is the kind of the leadership you need to think of before you make your choice. So the man is already positioning himself. Some people, especially those who are against his leadership, they'll come and say that, no, this man, he wants to make South Africa become like a Zimbabwe. <laughs> so me, every time when I listen to those kind of topic, I always laugh, you know, I always laugh because it shows on how we have people who have small mind close mind not a developed mind because even if we have to take the example of zimbabwe my question is are you gonna say that people of zimbabwe they are not eating they are not giving birth to the newborns they are not uh, um, drinking they are not living their life of course they are living their life of course they are living their life and this one thing was us as africans we we've been lacking of that unity of trying to support one another, especially when a country such as Zimbabwe they are going through sanctions, whereby we're supposed to support one another and see on how we can help Zimbabwe to stand on their knees to raise up and increase their economy. Instead, that is not the case. Instead, we are busy seeing each other like enemies, forgetting that what Zimbabwe they are going through today, they are going through today. It's not something that will last forever. So, that's one. Let us even put it aside. That's not an option. Another thing, some people will tell you that, no, uh, Julius becoming a president, he will open the border. I think that is where most of people are misunderstanding uh, Julius Malema. Why, why am I hated for saying people must unite? For saying... Let's come to, I'm not saying let's divide. I'm saying let's unite. Instead of being called a unifier, who, want, who seeks to unify humanity, not only in Africa, in the whole world. No, why do you bring these people? Oh, these people are going to do this. These people are going to do that. Why? Since when is a unifier the enemy of the people and the enemy of peace-loving South Africans, people who advocate for prosperity, for um, international solidarity with the downtrodden. Why do you now characterize me in the manner you characterize me? Mm. It is not my people who say the things that you are saying about me in relation to this question. It is those who enjoy the out of the division of our people. They know that the unity of Africa is going to rescue the minerals they've been stealing in DRC and making Eastern DRC uh, look like it's Rwanda and they, those people don't deserve to be there. But 
if there is no border of Rwanda and DRC, who will say these ones are there? There's, there's a conflict there which can only be resolved by collapse of, of borders where people don't, no longer see others as coming from the other side. That is unity. We're not collapsing uh, 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 borders for criminality. So when I said creative ways, I simply said, this is your home. You, no one can stop you. The same way these ones who are in government who are talking nonsense today, they found the creative way to enter these countries. They didn't go there with an aeroplane. A they didn't go with a passport. Mm -hmm. They all found creative ways. And, and, and it goes for all of them. There's no single one of them who has been there outside and who can say, I've been outside because they, I was on a church trip uh, to Mozambique. No. Because opening the border does not mean that you are welcome to stay in. Opening the border is to let the money come in, increase your economy, create more unemployment, I mean, uh, employment, and then let the money go out, circulate, bring more profit. That is how these things works. Why the economy of Europe are so strong? Isn't it because they have a Schengen, a Schengen visas? Isn't it because they are, they are having borderless continent? Whereby you can wake up in one day in the morning, you go and have a, a, a drink in Madrid. Whereby you'll be having that no, uh, in England today, uh, Barcelona will be playing, excuse me, Barcelona will be playing against Manchester City. You take your their own girl train over there, then you go over there, you watch the soccer, then you come back. So now, when they are doing this, have you heard any of the country in Europe complaining that no, we're having foreigners here? There's so much what 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 what? No, no, because they know that it's all about us giving each other money, doing economy, doing business together, trading together. So why us we are more focused on the word foreigners when we're supposed to be focusing on the words of growing up economy, developing Africa continent? That is one thing that is killing us most of the time. So Julius Malema, he have actually understand on that particular part. And he have understand that one of the way of raising the economy of this country, we need to let people to come in because when a person come in for an example you buy tomatoes from Tanzania you bring it to, to South Africa you sell it you make your profit you make your money let's say maybe you buy tomatoes from 10 for 10,000 rand you bring it here and then it give you maybe like 37 or 32,000 do you think you'll sit in South Africa with that money mm -hmm. No, let's just be honest. Like, do you think after you discover that oh, there's a man here, do you think you'll sit in South Africa? No, of course, you'll go out. <laughs> you'll think of going out this time not to go and buy tomatoes for 10,000, but to buy maybe tomatoes for 25,000 and keep another 10,000 as a profit aside. Because you know, if you bring more tomatoes in South Africa, you'll make even more profit. So, your life it will be all about you going in and out, in and out. The more you go in and out, you'll be contributing to the economy of South Africa and the one of Tanzania, the country which you are buying tomatoes. But unfortunately, we don't think it that way. We don't see it that way. All we think is about foreigner, foreigner, makwere, kwere. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we are all foreigner on this planet. So it is not that way that we'll develop this continent if we still have those kind of uh, uh, mind. Julius Malema once said, as he was trying to defend these same reasons that we're discussing here, he once said that, imagine creating a car. South Africa made their own car. Everyone in Africa will buy that car. Who's going to leave South Africa made car for them to go and buy a car which was made in Germany or in Japan. Obviously, we would like to support South Africa because the car that are made here 
they won't cost us a lot of money to ship it or anything like that. We can drive it by the road. From Zimbabwe or Mozambique or Namibia to other countries, from south of Africa to the west of Africa or to the central of Africa or to the north of Africa, all because we just want to support one another. But just because we have small mind or small way of seeing, of seeing things, we think that uh, everyone are the same. So that's at least is one thing that um, Julius Malema have shows how clever he is and they have understand that. And people, do, they can say whatever they want to say, but sooner or later, they'll understand that the man was right about it. So you'll see already on how is running his organizations, how he does his everything. For me, I think the man will make a good leader, not only for South Africa politics, but for the entire world as well. Especially, as I said earlier, especially if he, he continues the same discipline, the same strategies that they are doing to run the EFF so far. I already gave you a couple of examples which I want need to go back in. So, that was my point of view through my analysis. I can be wrong, I can be right, you will never know. But just because it is a, a topic which we bring you to discuss with you tonight, then I feel like no, it was very important for us to raise up also the point or discuss about Malema because we already discussed about other leaders and soon we're still going to discuss about other leaders since the days of uh, the, this general election is getting even more closer. So we're getting there small by small until we discover each and every leader. At the end of the day, it will be up to you to make your, your own choice because when you'll be voting, us personally, we won't be there with you. So it will be on your own choice and then, yeah. Guys, I believe that will be all for today. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video until now. Um, it has been some times now that we were not able to provide you with uh, certain details that we usually do in our videos because of some reasons that uh, keep us busy. But uh, now that we are here, obviously, we, everything will go back to normal. So please do us a favor before you leave, make sure that you hit that thumbs button. Give us your like. We we'll really do appreciate. If you find anything beneficial about this video, if you really like what we say in this video, please at least don't leave without giving us your thumbs up. We we'll really do appreciate because those your thumbs is what is really encouraging us and motivating us so that we can do better in our next time. So please keep in mind what I give it is my point of view through my analysis. Don't let that mislead you. You need to make your own judgment on your own and figure out who you think can be a good person for you to go and put your pilot paper in. So, again, let me also thank you guys so much for your support, unconditional support. I have to acknowledge that because as you can see it, guys, we are standing at 100k, 100 subscribers. I mean, 100,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, 100,000 subscribe. Look at there. Look at there. We're having 100 subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for being part of this big journey. Very soon we'll be celebrating with a YouTube trophy because YouTube they already wrote uh, to us and they said that they'll be shipping a trophy so once that arrives we'll be celebrating with you guys together but if this is your first time to watch our videos and you want also to be part of this 100 uh, subscriber i mean 100,000 subscribers well it is very simple you just have to click that subscribe button so that we can also add one more plus on what we have already because here at cool buzz tv we discuss about matters that make sense, okay? Because some people, you find them seated, seated in the social media, they are busy talking nonsense, talking things that are not benefiting Africa, talking about who did what, who slept with who, who gave uh, pregnant, who get married. Us, we are not here for that. Us, we are here to talk about matters that concern Africa because we want Africa 
to stand and be strong and uh, raise up their economy and do what they're supposed to be doing long time so if you are a pan-african from wherever you are watching us around the world and you want to be part of this family don't exist just join us right now by subscribing to the channel so that uh, whenever we are here live you'll be able to join us that will be all for now continue to be yourself be good be kind have respect for everyone in order for it to be respected may god bless you all until i see you again ciao ciao